guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is the 9th of November. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff, as ever, is alongside me. And it's Monday. Tom McManus and Alison McConnell here with us. And you especially. All you have to do is like, share and follow us. And join the football family on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. On YouTube, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. And we are truly delighted that you're coming to join us in great numbers. So, lots to talk about. Goals are plenty for both halves of... Of Glasgow, uh, Celtic and Rangers firing them in at the weekend. Give us your thoughts on the battle at the bottom in the relegation stakes in the Premiership. We'd love to hear from you on that. We've got Scotland, hopefully hear from uh, the Scotland camp ahead of what is a huge week for us. Who would have thought, uh, Ruffy, we're now looking at Serbia with a chance uh, to qualify for a major finals. And would you believe it, I was talking to someone uh, only in the last few hours about uh, a great Scotland memory. And I was talking about going as a fan in 1973 to see Scotland against Czechoslovakia, where Joe Jordan heads the winner and we're on our way to the World Cup finals. And roughly at that point, I thought we'd be I thought we'd be qualifying for every tournament. But, oh boy, it hasn't worked out that way in the last 20 or so years. No, it certainly has it, but this is the best chance we've ever given ourselves. You know, I, I think, uh, I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but a lot of people are beginning to fit, find holes in this Serbia side. Yeah, maybe the last four results have they been impressive. They're talking about players not being available. I'm no, I'm not treating that at all. I'm sure the majority of the players will get some kind of uh, elite soccer, you know, to get to that, to that game. So... No, it's all about us. Uh, it's all about what we do. You know, we've already seen that we can't scrape two goals, you know, particularly at home. So we've got to hope for a goal and maybe extra time and penalties or something like that. I don't think we've got the ability to go away there and, and win the game outright with two goals because uh, we haven't done it in the past. So let's just hope we get there. I don't care how we get there, you know, poor performance and, and get through. That's That's all that matters. Yeah, apologies to many of our viewers who have witnessed now on a regular basis uh, Ruffy going one way and then automatically going <laughs> the other. It's like a roller coaster with Ruffy. One minute he's on a high, we can do it. The next minute he can't. And today it's all about suddenly there's unrest in the Serbia camp, but we can't score two goals. So there you have it. That's the nature of the big man. Uh, give us your thoughts on that. But of course, at the weekend, we were treated to goals aplenty. Um, and uh, of course, of course, the early kickoff on the Sunday was Celtic against Motherwell, and boy, Ruffy, uh, Celtic came out of the traps flying in this one. They got the result, Peter. Uh, I never seen the ninety minutes; only seen the highlights. Uh, the result was the important one. Uh, there was a lot of scary moments in that Celtic defence yet again, but they got away with it. And the quality up front, and the quality of the players who scored the goals, Roger in particular. I thought it was superb, but no, going into that game, if you're a player, you're just saying, look, let's come away with a win here because everybody's waiting and, and Celtic to fall flat in their face and everything that was going to go with that, you know, the manager getting stuck and everybody. So the 4-1 takes the pressure off, but I'm sure Neil will know that there, there still needs a lot of work done in that defence. Yeah, um, Alison, if I was El Yunusi, and obviously I love a noise up myself, but if I was Mo El Yunusi, once he'd hit the third goal, I would have ran right over to the camera and then put the phone on and started dialing, by the way. It would have been it would have been the perfect noise up for the boy. I wondered if one of his teammates might have slipped him a phone off the bench or something, but yeah, I think he quite clearly went out yesterday with a, a point to prove, didn't he? Uh, and I think it, it made sense too for, for Neil Lennon to stick by him and stick to his guns and play him. It, it was a storm in a teacup when, when, in the aftermath of Thursday night, but uh, it clearly gave him the impetus to go out and, and just show what he's got and, and show that there's a wee bit more substance to him than that. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed out Rogic, Ruffy, because I thought he was uh, a different class in the game. But the back line, uh, again, they always give you a chance, uh, Celtic's back line. OK, it was a good header from Declan Gallagher, Tam, but it was still a cross ball. Yeah, listen, I, don't, I still don't think Celtic's defence are quite at it at the minute. Um, you look at Rangers at the minute, they're not conceding any goals, they're not conceding any chances. I felt as if Celtic went, you know, they got the goals at half time and then for the first 20 minutes of the second half, I thought they tried to coast it. 
they try to coast and see the game out against Mother when Mother will come in, into the game. I think a little bit of both. They, they obviously got a rocket at half time from the manager, but I think that Celtic came out and were very sloppy and very lax. And the Mother goal was coming, you could sense it. You know, they were putting balls into the box, lax out with a couple of great clearances off the line. So when the Mother goal went in, you know, you, you, you expected it. And, you, you know, Celtic then stepped up again and obviously got the, the killer third goal. But I just don't think Celtics were back three, back four, whatever they're playing just now. I just don't feel as if they're really secure. Especially when we look at the other team across Glasgow who are keeping clean sheets for fun. Celtic don't look as if they're going to keep a clean sheet at the minute. Yeah, um, a big hi to uh, Bill is in Kirkubri, uh, also Bill McMullen in Spain. Fred uh, also uh, saying hello to us all. Thanks to so many people uh, to uh, the Facebook Live who are giving us um, best wishes and, of course, their thoughts on uh, the weekend's football. We want to hear from you if you were at uh, any of the uh, games in the Premiership. Give us your thoughts on your team and how they're faring. If you're at the bottom end, Hamilton Aki's fans too. Uh, do you buy into what um, Brian Rice was saying? We'll hear from Brian Rice shortly. Of course, Ruffy did mention there Celtic got the result. Uh, Neil Lennon now looking for the consistency. You always need a result at a club like this and got the result and performance that I was looking for. Like we let ourselves down on Thursday, there's no question that. So they've shown today what they're capable of doing. And we just need that consistency of individual performance and, and team performance. It was so much better today. And you can talk about levels. You know, we've got a bit of work to do in Europe. It may be too far from us now, but um, we'll not give up trying, but we have to be more consistently, you know, and that's a good barometer for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks to Hugh Scott, who always watches this programme with razor sharp eyes. Don't worry, Ali, I don't think he can see that far back for your new bookcase and the books that are in it. Um, but he has said to me, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> Hugh Scott says, I'm not quite sure Mo El Yunusi would have dialed the phone like that. Ruffy, am I showing my age? <laughs> Do you remember those old phones when you had yeah. to go all the way around? Yeah. Sorry about that, Hugh. That's just showing, showing my age here. Yep, uh, Mo El Yunusi, a little bit of the uh, on his phone would have gone down a storm. Um, but as far as that back line that, that they're mentioning, Alison, listen, sometimes managers will give the people in the media absolute pelters, um, especially if they criticise a player. The reason I'm pointing this out, Ali, is I remember, as I mentioned uh, last week, Neil Lennon tore strips off me when I, I questioned the the selection of Mo Ball and Goalie um, because I thought he was suspect as a defender. Um, and then he dropped him the week after. Um, Neil Lennon came out and defended Shane Duffy to all and sundry, and then he dropped him on Sunday. Um, so, listen, our eyes don't deceive us when we're offering assessments. This boy is nothing personal with any of the media. He's just going through a torrid time. Managers are politicians, Peter. You and I both know that, that what's said publicly and what's felt privately can often be two very different things. And I also think publicly they're, you're very limited in what you can actually say without doing further damage. I think we all expected when when Ayer was fit and that they were and when Christopher Julian was fit. I think had they both been fit and, and and Duffy was in the run that he was on, I think he probably would have been taken out earlier. But uh, but his hands were tied, given the fact that there, there have been so many personnel difficulties and injury problems in in that position. I also felt as though Ayer wasn't entire wasn't a hundred percent fit. I think um, going back off. Again, and it looks like a reoccurrence of the, the the same injury, and I just wonder if if there was a wee bit of, a, a wee bit of trying to hurry him back so that he could give Duffy a rest. But I don't think there's any question when you look at that Celtic defence. I think the the fragility of it jumps out at you. I think if you were going to come up against him, you would want to be getting set pieces in uh, at every at every opportunity because there's a, a very good percentage that one of them will be successful. Uh, and I think when you've got that soft centre. It, it, it makes things very difficult. And I know Neil Lennon spoke after the game yesterday and he was saying the mini crisis is over, but it is only one game. You, what you have to do now is build in that and, and get a, a sense of solidity throughout the team and start piecing together a run of games and a run of consistency. 
Well, with Ayer possibly uh, heading back to the sidelines, will he have enough time to recover to get back into that back line? Will Christopher Julian be there? Uh, will Shane Duffy even be selected in the next game? He came off the bench through necessity. Uh, and I noticed today uh, even the uh, Republic of Ireland boss Stephen Kenny has been defending him. We'll have a look. I'll see how he comes in. Obviously, when he comes in, I'll chat to him and see how he is. But uh, if you're asking me, have I got faith in Shane? I, I, I definitely do. I believe in him. I think, yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, he, he's, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, he's, he's, his performances from Ireland, for Ireland overall, with now three, you know, three different managers have been overall to a very high standard. Yep, OK, um, so they're back in. We'll wait to see exactly what happens there. As for Motherwell, uh, as a, an attacking force, I thought they played some nice football, Tam. Um, when they got the goal, I mean, they had a fair shout for a penalty, uh, I can remember, at the game. Um, I was there. I thought they played some nice football, but maybe it lacked that cutting edge in the final third. Yeah, the last night, I don't think Motherwell were that, that poor. I think when you look at when Rangers went there, they absolutely murdered them. You know, it was a 5-1. I think the 4-1, you know, I don't think it was a 4-1 game. I think that Motherwell, particularly in the second half, had plenty of opportunities, plenty of possession, plenty of the ball. But as you said, they just never had that cutting edge to go and break Celtic down or get that, get that, get a couple of goals. So, you know, I, I don't think it was a, a, that bad a performance from Motherwell, any point of view. Um, Celtic were clinical. You know, Tom Rogic was excellent on the day. Him and Ella Nussi, you know, they linked up very, very well. And, uh, you know, they looked more... more more controlled in the middle of the park with Scott Brown in there and Carl McGregor. So I think that Motherwell can, can take a little bit of heart from it going forward and, and try and push up the table. Um, get the games against Celtic and Rangers will not define their season. You know, they're trying to get into that top six and I still think they've got every opportunity to get into the top six. Yeah, here's what Stephen Robinson made of the game. That's the difference. You know, they they got the chances and they took them. I think they had five good chances and they took four of them. <laughs> so, you know, we probably had five and took one of them. So that's that's a difference in, in quality and that's that's what you have to accept sometimes. But the, the second and third one, even the first one where we give the, the ball away, I don't think they had to work too hard for the goals. Yeah, so that was uh, at for part later on in the day. <laughs> hey, Ruffy, I, I mean, they absolutely battered them. Rangers, 8-0. Um, I mean, it was an incredible scoreline, but, uh, you know, if you're looking over the last four weeks, it's been nothing but positive. It's a momentum. It's a confidence. It's everybody wanting to play for the manager. It's people scoring goals. It's Rangers keeping a clean sheet. The whole thing at the moment around Ibrox is so, so positive. Yeah, they've, they've had a fantastic season, Peter. There's no doubt about that. You know, we all Stayed at the beginning of the season. Is this the year there's going to be a challenge? Uh, it fell flat in its face last year. I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think we're going to have a right run for our money right till the end. You're right, everything's so positive. You know, even the stuff that was happening off the park got dismissed very quickly because of the results on the park. Uh, and you, if you're a Ranger supporter, you're, you're, you're living every moment of it, you know. And we all knew that Hamilton had were short of six or seven players. And in all fairness to Brian Rice, he, he never moaned about it. He just says, look, we'll get on with it. He's brought a couple of players in. But his his squad is so depleted, it's unreal. So his big, his biggest problem will be trying to get the players' heads up and explain to him it's the games against Ross County and the others that are going to define his season. But it's a, it's a tough one to get players out of that once you've shelled eight goals. But uh, no, Rangers are on fire just now. And as Tam said, not losing any goals, doesn't matter who you're playing, you know, gives you loads and loads of confidence. Well, Stephen Gerrard, the Rangers manager, said uh, whether it was Hamilton or any other team, uh, that kind of result was coming. It has been it has been coming. We have threatened to do that, but uh, the pleasing thing today was we were very clinical. Um, we we suffocated Hamilton from start to finish. We stayed on them. We never let them, we never took, took our foot off the gas. And um, you can see the quality throughout the squad. I made five changes today and brought five subs on. And um, it didn't affect our level of performance. That's the most pleasing thing for me. Yeah, um, I think when everybody starts chipping in with the goals as well. Uh, Stephen Gerrard also mentioned, Alison, he, he took uh, Ryan Jack off to help Steve Clark. I think when you're seven or eight goals up, you, you could have taken three or four off to help other international managers. Uh, they were coasting. Yeah, I had a, a wee chuckle at that as well. I think it was maybe a year or so ago, a year and a half ago, there was a, 
a wee bit of tension between the Scotland camp and, and Rangers over Ryan Jack and the, his exposure when he was coming back from an injury. So I think probably just having it in mind that he, he's going to be playing on, on Thursday night. I think Stephen Gerrard probably thought it was in, in everyone's benefit, particularly Rangers, that he was taking off and, and giving a, a breather when the team are coasting like that. But to go back to your point, I think we, we overlook the impact that confidence can have on a team sometimes and the adverse of that, like what what a lack of it can do to a team. I, I just think just now Rangers must feel invincible because of the, the manner in which they've started the season. I don't think they've lost a league goal yet. They're scoring goals. Every player there is oozing confidence and it, 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 it augurs well for them going forward. But what the, the interesting thing is, is, is what the head of steam is that they build up now and what Celtic have got to do to try and catch them because games in hand are all very well, but you still have to go out and actually win them and get the points on board. Yeah, lots of messages coming in, lots of positive messages about Rangers. Um, Andrew Doherty obviously um, is a guy who believed in the JFK conspiracy theory about a man on the grassy knoll and two shooters because he says whatever Celtic do, Rangers upstage them and the media hate that, whether it's domestically or in Europe. Uh, need to maintain it, however, as Aberdeen are up next. <laughs> I'm not too sure <laughs> the, me the media hate Rangers upstaging Celtic. Uh, all we can do, Andrew, is observe the games and give you our take on it. You know, whether you feel certain people are of one persuasion or the other, um, if your head works that way, then, you know, uh, you need help. It's as simple as that. Tam, Rangers go out there, win convincingly, play good football, I think, you know, the manner of their football as well is, is pleasing. You know, it's almost as if they're defending from the front as well. The middle's working hard to protect the back line too. Uh, this is when you know mm. it. And the other key is, issue here, Tam, is you can practically pick the Rangers 11 one week to the next. Yeah, listen, everything's going really, really well for Rangers at the minute. You know, I watched the game. Um, you know, Hamilton never had an attempt at goal. You know, and I think, you know, in terms of Rangers defensively, that is a, a massive thing for them as well because... Stephen Gerrard said there, they suffocated them, they never took their foot off the gas, they never, you know, teams always have, Ruffy will tell you, teams always have a, a little spell in a game, even if you're getting a down, you have a wee 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe get create something, get a couple of attempts at goal, Rangers for 90 minutes were on top of Hamilton Ackies, you know, they were all over them, um, I think the hunger they've got in their play at the minute must be brilliant for a Rangers fan to watch, you know, off the ball, on the ball, they all want the ball, you know, when they lose it, they all try to get it back quickly, and uh, it's, you know, it, it's really fantastic to watch you know, Rangers at the minute because they're playing some sensational football, scoring goals, keeping clean sheets. And, uh, and they're, you know, their squad, as Stephen Gerrard said there, you know, you can make five changes and there's no drop-off in the level of performance. The guys that come in, they're fit. You know, they're fit and ready to go. Maybe that's the difference between Celtic. You know, Celtic, are the guys coming in ready to go? Maybe not. I think the Rangers guys are ready to go. You know, Kamar Roof, Defoe. You know, Balogun, they're all coming in and uh, and contributing to look fit and sharp and uh, and can play 90 minutes, no problem. So I think the intensity that Rangers are training at is certainly helping them, keeping all their players fit. Uh, Mark McPhee says the Rangers bench was uh, also very strong as well. And I think all the things that were labelled at Rangers last year, um, Ruffy, uh, have been rectified. You know, managers look and they understand, can they get a guy who comes off the bench and can change the game in your favour? Can you work and organisationally work, you know, day-to-day -day in training to get a group of people together and be able to, uh, you know, take on board what the manager is saying and then put it into operation out in the field and they're doing that? Yeah, they're doing exactly what Celtic have been doing for the last couple of years. You know, Celtic's... Uh, strength was what was sitting on the bench you know things weren't going particularly well uh, a guy would come on and had something to prove nine times out of ten he, he would do particularly well and that that's that's the whole bench it was doing that exactly what tam has said there but uh steven Gerrard has now done that you know he's bought in players who are quite happy to sit on the bench no one given the chance you know that they're, they're in a good side they're in a good a good team you know and and, and they want to impress as well and that's what Rangers didn't have that Celtic did have in the last couple of years. But now they say the two of them have good players on the bench. So it remains to be seen, you know, which, which of the two of them, you know, step up to the mark. 
Yeah, Stephen Smith says, how can you name the, the team Peter when Stephen Gerrard makes four or five changes most games? Well, uh, to be honest with you, um, Stephen, I think we can name Rangers' strongest team for big games more often than not. If he makes changes against Hamilton Ackies, who can blame him? This is an Ackies side that, quite simply, uh, Alisson have lost the last four games. They've conceded 20 goals. Ackies fans are not happy and they're letting the manager know about it as well, Alisson. Yeah, I actually felt for Brian Rice last night when he went out to, <coughs> to do the post-match interview because what do you say after that? Where where do you go after you've just watched a, a performance and a, a display like that? And harder still, I think, is this morning when you go back in and you have to try and get them to go again. But I think they're everyone's favourite tip for, for relegation at the start of every season. And, and for so long, I think they've thrived on that, on being everyone's underdog. But... I think you have to fear for them this season, just courtesy of the way that they've started. It's been it's been desperately poor. And the problem is, if you become marooned down there, it's very difficult to get out of it. The other thing is that we still have this looming pandemic hanging over us. None of us can say with any certainty that we won't be in a similar position to last last year where we were in March. And the last thing you want to be is, is find yourself down at the bottom when there's a danger of, of the league being called prematurely. Yeah, and of course, Brian Rice himself, uh, after an 8-0 hammering, uh, came up with uh, Southampton's plight after they lost 9-0. And he says that could be the inspiration for his players to bounce back. Ah, of course it is. Lost 9-0 uh, or 9-1, 9-0, I think it was, to, uh, to Leicester. Last season, I sort of took the English Premiership now. You know, so things can change. Things change quickly in football. But you've got to want to change. You've got to do the things that... You know, some players out there today were doing things that they wanted to do, rather than what we wanted them to do. Yeah, um, I, I don't think there'll be the same type of change where Southampton hit the top of the table. I can't quite see Hamilton going on an unbelievable run and transforming their season at the moment. But one of the things that they do well, and this is something that I think a lot of people forget, is Hamilton have defied us for eight, nine years since we started this show. I think Ruffy and I have been tipping the Ackies to get down. And this season, we've decided not to tip them, and they're in free fall. So... Um, God only knows what's going to happen there. Uh, Ruffy is determined uh, to see Ross County being relegated for his own <laughs> political his own political reasons, which we cannot. Because he never to. got a, he never got the player of the year dance up there one year. He's still better about it. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, also, spare a thought. Spare a thought for people who actually look at little things that we're talking about in the football, but also are aware of the situation with COVID here. And Tommy Adams says, Ruffy, is there any chance you can get that wee mark off your wall sorted? I keep trying to wipe it off my screen. Um, to be honest with you, um, we're not sure. Well, don't, I'm no, going to don't, move. Don't. Tomorrow I'm are moving. You, I'm going to you, move somewhere. Moving? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. move. I've been sitting in this chair. I can see it. It's there. I can see it. The last seven months I've been sitting in this chair and this precise. I'm moving. I'm not telling you where I'm going, but I'm definitely yeah. moving tomorrow night. Well, to be fair, Ruffy, Tommy is wiping that. He's wiping his television or his computer vigorously at the moment, trying to get that mark off. But don't worry, wherever he moves, uh, I can guarantee you, knowing his house as I do, there will be another mark on the wall um, because <laughs> Ruffy, Ruffy loves a party. And when the parties happen, yep. the, be the beers fly everywhere. The wine. It's yep. oh, it's, it, he holds some of the best parties you could ever wish to be at. And uh, only before we go on to the other Premiership results, let me just say, there's a lot of envy at the moment. I don't know if you've noticed, but Ali's new room, Tam, looks absolutely sensational. And with the it possibility, <laughs> and we're not doctors and is that is that new headphones as well peter with new headphones the lot but well, with a boys gaming everything. headphones <laughs> yeah well I was say, who cares if it's gaming headphones all i know is with the possibility of a vaccine i reckon we could be at the big housewarming new room party roughly uh only in the next two <laughs> or three months that's all i'm saying to you yeah, Ruffy's just no bothering. He's raging. He's bolted. <laughs> anyway, Ali, it looks great. Let's have a look at the Scottish Premiership results to see where those uh, two Celtic and Rangers results fit in. 
Aberdeen 2, Hibs 0. We're going to speak to uh, your man about that. Ross County 1, Livingston 1, St Mirren 0, Dundee United 0, St Johnston 1, Kilmarnock 0. And then, of course, uh, Motherwell 1, Celtic 4, Rangers 8, uh, Hamilton 0. Uh, give us your thoughts on that as well. It's absolutely incredible. So, um, as far as the other results are concerned, uh, boy, Tam... I I watched the dandy dons. The wheels have come off. I, I have to tell you, not only have the wheels come off, but I, I thought Aberdeen were absolutely at it. I mean, they had a couple of really... You know, I was sitting watching the game and I'm thinking to myself, you know, the boy Hedge is, is a handful as well. He's giving them a, a, an option, but Hibbs just didn't seem to be at the races, Tom. No, that, that, to be honest, it's the poorest I've seen Hibs all season, Peter. I thought they were really, really bad, really poor from start to finish. Um, you know, they've obviously got a lot of praise off me on this programme, but that was by far the worst display of the season. They obviously gave away the two early goals. Um, the first one, I think, is just sloppy. You know, it's a little ball through and the two centre-halves get split. And then the second one, Ryan Portis tries a, tries to, tries a diagonal. And it's a little bit unlucky, listen, it comes off the back of the boy's head and gets right into his path, but... Cosgrove finishes it superbly. I, I thought he still had a lot to do. He goes through and he hits it with the outside his foot into the top corner. And see, after that, Hibs huffed and puffed, and then they could have been there all night and not scored. You know, Aberdeen. I think there's still a gap between Aberdeen and Hibs. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it in the last two games. You know, Aberdeen came down Easter Road and won quite comfortably, and then they won the, the game the other night comfortably. So I think there is still a gap between Aberdeen and Hibs. I think Aberdeen are still a better side with a better, stronger squad, but. And saying that, Derek McInnes has been up there for, what, five, six years, and he's been able to build every season on on what he has. And I think they're still the, you know, the benchmark for, for teams out with the old firm to go and, go and topple, because I think Aberdeen will, will, will finish in third place this season. So I think the Hibs have got a, a, wee, bit, a wee bit to go to, to get up to their kind of level. Well, I thought Wright was impressive. Again, Ferguson just continues to do what he does in the middle of the park. But, uh, Ruffy, if you'd have seen Sam Cosgrove, you know, if there had been anybody else out with uh, Aberdeen, you know, a Celtic or a Rangers player doing that outside of the boot, curling it mm. into the roof of the net, we'd be raving about it. It was a great goal. Yeah, it was fantastic. For a guy his size, you know, he showed the, a lot of ability going through there and he obviously knew what he was doing. You know, he knew he couldn't get it away uh, at, at his feet, so he went for the outside of the foot, which <laughs> not a lot of players can, can master that technique, but uh, it, was a, it was a super goal. And he looks as if he's got something to prove now. He looks as if he wants to go in, you know, and score, get back to scoring the twenty odd goals a season. He rejected that move abroad, you know, which was a strange one for me. But him, you know, he had his own motive for for doing that. But uh, certainly, if he starts scoring goals like that, a lot of clubs will be after him again. Yeah, and uh, also I got quite a few people saying here. Uh, I watched that Hibs game with uh, Tam's commentary. He likes the word we. I think he must get a fiver every time he says it. Well, of course, that's the other great thing about it. When you're on Hibs TV, you can be unbelievably partisan and biased <laughs> and give it. Oh, we are great, and the two goals were offside. No, I wasn't and doing that never, Friday. <laughs> no, I'm to be honest, not. no, Aberdeen were by far a better side. Well, one win in four. Um, uh, I mean, that's uh, hard going, by the way. Um, it's hard to actually... When you, when and you're Celtic not playing up well next to take, at Easter Road. Take the... Well, there's, there's yeah. another pumping. Um, so... <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I, I don't think Hibs will pump them. Maybe just be 1-0 or 2-0 with Hibs. <laughs> well done. That keeps you in the job till January. Uh, anyway, uh, apart from anything else, I'm looking at uh, uh, Aberdeen. They're doing well. Hibs, 1-1-4. Not great, but they can bounce back. We've got an international break for managers to work with uh, what players they have remaining in their squad as everybody goes on international duty. Uh, St Johnston managed to get a 1-0 win. Ruffy, you you had a great week in the predictions. You said St Johnston would win against Kelly, and they did. Yeah, I just think at home sometimes, you know, that uh, they get a wee rub of the green. I, th I thought they did get a rub of the green, you know, and, and Friday night. I thought Kilmarnock possibly should have got something out of that game. Uh, but it wasn't to be. Uh, I think the fog was the, the worst thing of the lot. But uh, it was a, certainly a fantastic strike for the wee boy McNamara. It was, it was superb. You know, it just fell right into his path. And uh, I think the goalkeeper was maybe unsighted, but uh, no, a good win. I've always said I don't think St. Johnson are a bottom four side. I think they will 
scrape out of that way and then try and force into the top six. But uh, they're, they're, they're not in any problems for where I am. Yeah, and uh, St Mirren managed to get the first point in 27 days with that nil-nil against Dundee United. Uh, Tom, it's fair to say um, uh, you, you had a nightmare. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think, uh, I think obviously your cheating has affected me last week badly. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> there will be an asterisk next to your score at the end of the season. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't uh, <laughs> I've been real yeah, done. You, 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 you are getting reeled in, to be honest with you. St Mirren nil on United nil. And then, of course, Ross County won, Livingston won as well. I think you predicted that as well, Ruffy. I mean, let's have a look at the predictor to see what the points are on this because this is getting interesting now. Um, oh, oh, 11 points, the difference now. And Ruffy, right on my tail with that superb uh, week that you had, Ruffy. You must be delighted with that. And as we mentioned, Ruffy, uh, we built Tam's confidence up early in the season and then slowly but surely we just chip away at him. Yeah, you just got to hold your nerve in this competition. You know, it's in the last two or three weeks when you bottle it. You know, that, that's when the, when the pressure really <laughs> hits in because that's when you know yeah. it's going to cost you a few, Bob. But you've you got to stay relaxed, you know, and uh, yeah. and hopefully you can get but Tam can have another bad uh, run in a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then once it gets to March or April, Ruffy, we can start to look at the menu up at the McDonald's in East Kilbride to see exactly what we'll be eating <laughs> on the day. Um, I'm collecting anyway, the vouchers already. Just yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that's the Premiership table. What do you make of that table, Ali? Because uh, top, uh, again, nine points. Uh, Rangers fans going into the international break thinking absolutely fantastic. Uh, despite Celtic having two games in hand, the only worry I would suggest for Stephen Gerrard, Ali, is no players coming back off international duty injured. That's always a concern and all the more so. I think that, that worry is probably heightened because of the, the COVID situation when they, they leave the, their own club bubble and they're exposed to to players that are, are maybe crossing the country and, and coming from, from elsewhere. I think there's a real fear that you could be denied the services of, of someone as happened to Celtic on, on the last camp when when Christy was having, having to go out and, and isolate even Although he tested negative, I think he'd said he said he posted something like six negative tests after being in proximity to Stuart Armstrong. So I think there there's the added worry, not just of a of a, a traditional injury that you might pick up when you're playing or, or, or training elsewhere, but also the fact that you're coming into exposure with other people. But to go back to the the table, Peter, it, it's not just the the points and and the the manner in which Rangers are started that will be pleasing, but also the goal difference. If you look at that goal difference now, it's up to 13 points. Slight now, extra point. I, yeah. I, mm. Now, it may not come into play. It's fairly insignificant at the minute and this early on, but if, if it does get closer, it, it certainly comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, just before that, of course, uh, every player was hoping to get into Gabriel Antoniazzi's Team of the Week. Let's see if we agree with it. Scott Bain did concede once but made some important saves as Motherwell had 14 shots at goal. James Tavernier now has a stunning 8 goals and 6 assists in the league and was at it again yesterday. Daniel McNamara has been a revelation since joining St Johnston on loan and backed his first goal for the club. Nicky Devlin was on the score sheet for Libby and defended resolutely as always. Richard Tate was a standout in a stalemate but a point is something for the buddies to build on. Scott Wright's in red hot form right now and scored Aberdeen's opener on Friday. Joe Rebo grabbed two goals and his return to fitness has led to more creativity for the Jers. Tom Rogic is the man who could unlock defences for Celtic and he did so again against Motherwell. Lewis Ferguson got two unorthodox assists against Hibbs and was an engine in midfield. Mohamed El Yanoussi answered his critics with his first hat-trick for the Hoops. Kimar Roof scored two in Rangers' romping of Hamilton and he wants that number nine starting place. Hey, a lot of good players in there. Of course, Nicky Devlin as well got uh, Player of the Month for Livingston. Um, good lad, been on the show. Uh, so well done to Nicky as well. Good to see him in there for the Team of the Week. Uh, Tam, was there any you disagreed with there? No, I, no, I, not uh, really. Um, I, was just, I was actually just thinking last night, has, has a defender ever finished top goal scorer in the top flight in Scottish football? I, guess a I, shout, I, think there's a, I, I think there's a chance of it this year with Tavernier. 
honestly. Yeah, you do. Um, he's he's, he's top just now, but I think that he can yeah. get. I think he could get 50, 20 goals and be top scorer. Yeah, yeah, fifteen dive, penalties. You're diving in here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. No, shut there's no up. bet. I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, hey. Shut up. Let me reel him in. Let me reel no. him in, Ruffy. Uh, 20 hey. uh, well, to be fair, Tom, you know the great thing about this programme? We're always we're good friends and we can take uh, a bit of banter and we can obviously take a bit of opinion as well. You're talking nonsense. There's no danger he'll finish top goal scorer in Scotland this season. There'll be more than a few candidates ahead of him. But I'll tell you, you you'll feel marched to me. Look at, look at Tom's face now. He doesn't like somebody telling him he's doing he's No, talking eh? <laughs> you no. know, you're on that you're on that Hibs TV and you're all clapping. He you could get twenty five he could get twenty five goals. Yeah, no chance. No chance he'll never get 25 goals. He'll score a, he'll score a right few, though, I'll tell you. The boy's on fire, and fair play to him, because... He's got 12 the already, people, the, amount, the amount of people, and I, you know, I, I've questioned his defensive qualities at times over the last few years, but Ali, he has bounced back big time when a lot of people wondered whether he was uh, Rangers captain material, and I include Rangers fans in this who mentioned to me that he was never a Rangers captain. Now, this boy has had a great season and he deserves all the praise that's coming his way. I think he's playing his own. He's, <coughs> he's got a, a point to prove this season. I think uh, there, there, there's been a few jibes that went his way, the, the, the serial losers and all the rest of it last last term. But I, I just think he, he looks as though he, he, he looks a different player. He looks a, a, a reformed player. And I would tag Connor Goldson into that as well. I think uh, that they've lent a real solidity to, to a defence that, that didn't always look just as, as solid as it does now. Um, but he, he's been excellent. He's been he's played a, a huge role in where Rangers are just now, and he's done it not just domestically, but he's done it in those Europa League performances as well. But he's been huge so far this season. Yeah, absolutely. And I like Patrick McMenamin's take on this. He says Tavernier as uh, the top goal scorer. There's a better chance of Tam pronouncing his name correctly. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Patrick. Tam makes him sound as if he's the fifth musketeer alongside. D'Artagnan and Porthos. Um, um, so you, you know what the problem with you is? You've been, you've been listening to Ruffy that long that you're starting to just make up pronunciations for Just call him, just call him Tav. Yeah, it would be, be easier for you, to be honest with you. Anyway, he's banging in the penalties as well. A um, couple of things I want to get talking on in Scotland as well. Um, incidentally, we'll be announcing the winner of the competition for the um, iPad, the prints and the t-shirts this week so um, fingers crossed uh, you could be the lucky winner of that fantastic uh, set of prizes they are all going together uh, and I can tell you that we will have another fantastic Christmas bumper competition for you as well to look forward to and hopefully it will give you an early Christmas present so uh, if you can, like, share and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, now uh, and Graham Dorans, just quickly, Ruffy, Graham Dorans has decided he's going to go to uh, Australia, uh, Western Sydney Wanderers. Um, I think, of course, uh, Kenny Miller is coaching there. There was always a chance he was going to leave Dundee. Is it is it a big loss? I think it's a big loss. Uh, Any time we played them last year, he was really impressive. Uh, he was definitely should have been in a league above. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But uh, it seemed he had a few things in his contract to move on, and he's at a stage now. Uh, he's probably looking to his family. He's looking to his kids. You know, looking for the future, and and why not go over to Australia? You know, everybody seems to enjoy it uh, thoroughly. I was listening to Scott McDonald over there, Kenny Miller's over there. They're all having an absolute ball. Uh, and when you're at that age of your career, you you have to really think seriously what you're going to do. And uh, no, I think you'll see more and more players like that coming to the end of their career. You know, making these kind of decisions. Did you ever have the chance to go to Australia, Tom? Uh, no, no. Obviously, I played in America a couple of times, and um, no, I never had the opportunity to go to Australia. But I agree with Ruffy. I think it's a great lifestyle change for Graham Dorans. He's, he's got a young family. He's thirty-three years old. He signed a two-year deal. So, and I think it'll be good company for Kenny and Kenny's wife. I think they're all friends. So I think that'll be it'll, it'll all link up very, very well for them over there, and they'll they'll have a great time in the sunshine. I, I would think. 
Well, there you are. You get a wee bit of... That's a great thing about having Tam on, Alison. You always get a wee bit of lifestyle background about them being great friends and everything and, and parties. And you always get a wee bit of what I call tit-bit gossip alley from Tam as well. He loves all that kind of a OK magazine stuff to give us. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I know when I know I know when Ali's not going to get to just one word answer and then custard pie. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, I like a bit of a, you know a little bit of tip bit gossip, Ruffy. Uh, and of course, the one worrying thing is, and I don't know if maybe Tam could help in this, but Ali seems to be struggling at her five Ks at the moment, and I, and I really think uh, we we need somebody to help her, Ruffy. She's just she's she's gone through a bad period of uh, trying to run the five K, not in good times, may I add. Well, I didn't know that. That hadn't came to my knowledge. But, uh, you know, you've just got to keep digging in there. You know, it's just uh, perseverance. Uh, 5K, that was nothing for me when I was younger. But uh, it certainly is. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, just, just, just to get away from the running at the time, maybe I'll appreciate this more than, than the, the two of you. I went to play golf yesterday, and the only tee-off time I had was half past one, not knowing that it takes three and a half, four hours to play a golf, around the golf, <laughs> three holes to go, I couldn't see. It was absolutely pitch black. <laughs> it was funny for me because I was there and uh, it was just yeah. bad judgment. Uh, but it was pitch black, the only car in the car park. Uh, and I, yeah. I think there was a few people having a laugh as I left. So you, could, so you couldn't see the hole later on? I couldn't see anything. Yeah, still, you had to be there for it to be as funny as Ruffy yeah. made out. Yeah. Um, let's uh, crack on <laughs> with the with the uh, Scotland stuff because Ryan Fraser and suddenly Ali Grant Hanley out of the squad. Uh, no disrespect to, to Hanley, but I think Fraser's a bigger blow. The loss of Fraser is huge because just the fact that he'd started to, to strike up a, a partnership with Dykes, I think you, you want to try and keep that together for, for as long as you can if you've had a bit of success with it. So I think it's a big loss. Uh, I'm curious to see if maybe they'll, they'll call up any more. I don't think there was any hint of it this afternoon, but I just wonder if there might be any more additions. But what, you, what you're really sitting now and, and, and crossing your fingers and hoping that there, there are no more call-offs, because I think... This is a, a massive game. It's a huge game for everyone. It can be so defining for this generation of, of Scotland players to go out and, and take the country back to a major tournament for 22 years. You just you want as strong a squad to pick from and select from as you possibly can. Yeah, and, and I have to say, uh, they've come in for a bit of criticism of late, but uh, full marks to my old compadres at Sky Sports, Tam, because Scotland against Serbia is free to watch on Thursday. So there'll be a huge audience for it. And I think that's a I think that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I think it's great. It's on the they we call it the council telly so everybody can watch it. <laughs> and uh listen I, I, I think the they get they get a lot of stick for the, the box office stuff that's going on there now, you know, try to charge people fifteen pound uh, BT Sport as well to watch premiership games on top of their subscription, which is an absolute joke. Um so they've done the right thing this time. You know, they're, they're going to, a lot of people, a lot of people in, obviously in Scotland and Northern Ireland, they're going to be able to watch their country, um, even if I've not got Sky or whatever. So I think it's great. And uh, listen, the more the merrier. If it give, gives us more support, then then great. But let's just hope we can do the business and it's not a nightmare on Sky that night. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I think, uh, yeah, well done, Tam. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I think getting the, the chance to actually watch it, uh, especially in these difficult times, Ruffy, I mean, we used to take it for granted watching the big games. You'd have, you know, millions of people tuning in to watch the games, uh, Ruffy, but this time around, I think it'll get like a really big audience because suddenly there's that feel-good factor around it. You know, if we can pull it off, it would be unbelievable. Yeah, we're definitely getting into the game a lot better than what we were in March. There's no doubt. Uh, there's a lot of players playing to form. You know, there's a lot of encouragement. Obviously, the boy Fraser dropping off as a blow because him and Dykes looked as if there could be some kind of partnership. But uh, for me, it's all about the midfield and the defence, you know. And I know the debate's going to go on. Are we going to play three at the back? Are we going to play four at the back? You know, who's who's going to be in? I mean, we we touched on it very early at the the beginning of the show, and Alison was talking about Jack at, at Rangers. You know, I, I'm 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 treading towards Armstrong. So Armstrong at the beginning of the week there, 
he's, he's as good a player as Jack and he creates a wee bit more. You can get a goal at him. You know, I, I, I think he might be somebody that will come into the thought of the manager. But it's all about the formation. There's going to be a lot of decisions at the back. You know, is it going to be the motherwell boy at the back or is it going to be McKenna? You know, these are decisions that he's going to have to come up with. But uh, I'm sure he will at the end of the day. And I, I think we're getting to the game with a lot more confidence than what we would have been in March because I think everybody was writing us off, particularly against Norway. But lo and behold, it's Serbia. So... No, let's just go into the game and hope we get the rub of the green. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, it's now getting to a situation with Fraser out, Tam. Um, I wonder if Steve Clark suddenly has an easier decision to make in this one, or is he still going? Ruffy thinks it's going to be a, a 5 4 1 uh, situation for this game. Is it, is it somebody like a Christie off dykes, or would he be tempted? Yeah. With, would he be tempted with your old mate, Griffiths? No, I, I think he'll, I don't think he'll play two up front to start the game. No chance. Um, I think he'll keep Griffiths in reserve, maybe for the last fifteen twenty minutes. If need a goal, um, you know, need to get something at the game, then he'll bring Griffiths on. But I think he, I think you're right. You mentioned it. I think he'll play Christie. He will play Christie just behind um, Dykes, or he could play Armstrong just behind Dykes. You know, both of them are similar players. They, they've got good engines. They've got an eye for goal. They can get up and get past the striker. So. I think that's probably your options, and then I, I, I would I would play Ryan Jack. I think Ryan Jack's your your natural defensive midfield player. I think he's the one that really wants to sit there and protect, and uh, so I would I think he'd definitely be playing. And then you you'd, you'd pick maybe two or three alongside him. So um, listen, I, I think that Ruffy's right. Well, they're in a much better position than we were. Uh, we've got John McGinn. I watched him last night. Superb. Scored a great goal, which was unbelievable. This allowed that Vars are just a farce, but we'll get into that. And uh, he's playing really well in a good Aston Villa team. So we've got a lot of guys down there. Armstrong scored as well. So players playing at the highest level and doing well. So all goes well for, for Scotland. Yeah, middle to front. There are choices to make. Ali, back line. I still can't, I still can't work out what is the definitive one. Can you? No. Uh, I just wonder if Steve Clark knows himself. Uh, if he's, he's had a few weeks now. Since the, since the shootout to decide where you go and, and, and whether or not he, he knows which way he's going and, and he can get them together and, and training and work on shape and work on a, on a few other things. But I have to be honest too, I'm not sure what the best is either. I'm not sure if it's better to go with a, a straight back four or, or go with a back five uh, and almost have two wide players come in. Uh, but it's a huge decision. I think you've got to try and get your best players in there. I think you've got to try and, and, and find a way to, to maximise what you've got and, and, and bring in players that are, 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 are playing week in, week out at the very top level because it's, it's a huge game and, and you, need, you need them to be on it. Yeah, and to go yeah, back to your I'll... point about Griffiths, I just don't think, I don't think Griffiths will start either. I don't think he's done enough in the last three weeks to prove that he's fit enough. He, he, I don't think he's fit enough to start for Celtic. I don't think there would be, be anything there that would point to him starting for Scotland. Yeah, uh, OK. Uh, we won't get the chance to speak to you ahead of the game, Ali. Uh, are you confident of a win? Or I'm not confident. Uh, I'm, I, I'd have to be honest and say I'm not confident, but I'm wishing for it. I'm hoping for it. I'm, I'm, I'm giving everything to, to hope that the uh, Scotland get through, but... I don't know if anyone would be confident. I don't know if that's the right word uh, to use, but certainly hopeful. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Ruffy, we know what you're like. I mean, you could be confident today and then tomorrow something happens in your life. Uh, you know, you're playing floodlit golf and then all of a sudden you're having a nightmare. Um, so we'll wait till Thursday to get your mood to see what kind of mood you're in. Uh, Tam, you'll be with us on Wednesday, but are you confident at the moment, Tam? <sighs> I'm a, I'm a bit like Alison. Listen up, I'm very hopeful we can get a result. I think we're capable of getting the result, but we've got to defend very, very well. We've got to get a wee bit of luck on the night, and uh, we're capable of getting a result. But hopeful again, rather than expecting, is is the one. We're big underdogs, Peter. Yeah, I think, it, yeah. I think everyone in big the country, underdogs. you're willing it to happen. You're willing a result, but you know how high the stakes are, and you know how difficult a challenge it is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, just and I'm I'm going to touch on this point. Um, 
because uh, Stuart Ramsey says, I'll be there shouting for Scotland, Peter. Well done to you, Stuart. Um, lots of people um, are going to be shouting for Scotland uh, on Thursday night. Fingers crossed we, we get an unbelievable result and send the nation, uh, you know, delirious with joy and happiness. Simple as that. Um, just on the, the, the point that you made there, Tam, I know you didn't want to touch on it, but I do feel as if it's got um, some kind of... Uh, impact on Scottish football eventually, Ruffy. I don't know about you, but I don't want to see VAR come in any time soon, Ruffy, because I'm, I, I've now no, lost no. complete. I've now lost complete faith in what's happening. If uh, Patrick Bamford's offside because his arm, that's the worst one out, ever. It's just terrible, isn't it? I yeah. mean, we're now losing. We're now losing the plot. Yeah, but I think I think the authorities are beginning to see. Uh, the other side of it. I think it will be tinkered. Uh, it has to be tinkered if the amount of managers and top class players come out and say, look, this is getting ridiculous. They have to have a serious look at it. And I think they will. They will. They'll have to change some aspect of it, particularly that one you're talking about, or your heels over the line. Or We want to see goals. Football's all about scoring good goals. And that was a good goal that was chalked off. And it is killing the game. So I think they'll revise it. I think they'll have another look at it, whether it's technical or whatever. And I think it'll get, by the time we get it, I would like to think it'd be modified considerably. Yeah, I have to say, even John McGinn's goal, Alison, I mean, touch and go because it might have been that the player was in the goalkeeper's eye lane. I thought it was harsh, to say the least, but you've got John McGinn jumping about like a madman, celebrating what was a thunderous shot into the roof of the net. And then all of a sudden, the whole game goes flat. And, and, and interestingly enough, Alison, the thing that we were worried about long term for the game of football was stopping it for any great period of time. It's five minutes before the game started again. I think it's a case of being careful what you wish for, isn't it? I think sometimes we've, we've all been very, very critical of referees getting it wrong and, and, and the demands for, for humans not to make errors in, in big games. But what you're seeing now is a forensic examination of, of, of everything. And it's just, it's sucking the, the joy out of everything. It's just, um, it's taking the pleasure out of it. But it's also, I think, taking the core value of what the game's about. I mean, to go back to the Patrick Bamford one, he's, his hand's out because he's signalling where the ball, where he wants the ball to be played. It's a it's a natural reaction. It, it's, it's, it's extraordinary that you, that can be deemed illegal. Uh, it's just, um, I think, when you're interpreting the, the laws, I think what you need is some common sense in its application. But then people would argue and officials would argue, well, that's open to interpretation again. And it has to be black and white. If you're going to bring it in like this, it, it has to be black and white. But what you would have to say, since VAR was introduced, it, it's, it's not been a, a positive contribution. More often than not, we've all scratched our head and looked at decisions and thought, why on earth has that been given that way? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, um, the Scotland uh, backroom team were talking ahead of the game on Thursday. It's just uh, not that long finished and we thought we'd try and get one of the uh, interviews in as quickly as possible for you. We've managed to do that. Scotland assistant Stephen Reid gives us an update on the injuries ahead of the big game. Uh, Ryan, Ryan and Grant Hanley at the moment um, are, are struggling, so it's uh, you know disappointing. Obviously, you know Grant's missed a, a little bit of football, and you know unfortunately he's not going to be with us. And, and Ryan as well, um, who performed really well in the last camp, so that's you know that is a blow. But we've got strength in depth. We've obviously got you know bigger numbers than usual in the squad. Yeah, so uh, just as we said at the top, confirmed by uh, Stephen Reid there, um, I still think we've got enough to make a game of it. Fingers crossed that we do indeed. We try on a Monday to Friday to bring you as much uh, football interviews as possible. Uh, and of course, if you want all the updates, you can go on to www.plzsoccer.com and you get all the latest news, Scottish, English football and right across Europe and world football as well. Uh, on our YouTube channel, there's all sorts of unique video uh, content and there will be even more coming up I can tell you as we head into a new year hopefully uh, when uh, this form of lockdown or the inability to travel any great distances uh, once that all 
um, actually disappears, hopefully with vaccine uh, working successfully. We'll all be back in the studio together and we're going to bring you some really good interviews and uh, lots of different content as well. So uh, that's to look forward to. Um, I watched English football at the weekend. I'm not sure if uh, a sniper caught Kieran Tierney in the Arsenal game. We've all done it. We've all, we've all, we've all had a swipe at the ball and, and, and actually had a nightmare. Stuff. It was a howler, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, it's just, listen, I've done that plenty of times myself. You just lose your balance and you, and, and you hit the deck. And uh, it's, it's really, really embarrassing. But uh, I was just glad you added the second part of Arsenal there. Um, because <laughs> I thought that was the area that had been hit in. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the English results. And the reason I'm mentioning the English results in this programme, um, Southampton top of the table, you know, there's, it's changed, I think, about four times. Manchester United, uh, again, is it a stay of execution for Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer? Mark McGee sent me a text uh, at the weekend saying, I told you Ollie would get it right. <laughs> Uh, and of course, uh, gr great to see West Ham doing so well under David Moyes. I don't know about you guys, Ruffy, I fall into this camp where I always look at Scottish players and managers and really wish them well. I, I really want them to do uh, well. Uh, anybody who's playing, it comes from our country, fiercely patriotic about it. You just, do you feel the same way, Ruffy? You look at them, you think, oh, I hope John McGinn scores. I hope David Moyes wins that game. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it just me or is it, is it everyone? No, oh, I'm sure it's everyone. I'm sure everybody would like to see Scottish uh, players doing particularly well. Uh, it was interesting in Davy Moy's face when they scored that late goal there. Uh, he, he tried to keep himself he, together, you know, and just say, oh, well, it's just <laughs> another goal here. He, he, I bet he was dying to bust up and jump up and down. But they, as far as English leagues concerned, I mean, it's Leeds United. I think they have to have, to have a look at the, the, the way they're playing the game. The you know, they were great at the <laughs> beginning. They were great at the beginning going forward, but I think they have to get a, a reality check now and just, you know, start maybe mm. defending a lot more because they're losing far too many goals. Yeah, great to watch, I have to tell you. But uh, the one team that mm. is great to watch at the moment, Alison, uh, of course, I know you're a, uh, you're a big fan of Leicester now. We always like to keep a close eye on them to, to see how long he's going to stay there. <laughs> but uh, Brendan Rodgers, Leicester, top of the table now. Listen, if you were smart, you'd have a few quid in Brendan Rodgers being the next Man United manager. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Now, just out of curiosity, have you got a few quid on it, Ali? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's got the Man United uh, posters I, I... up in his one. Oh, exactly. <laughs> he's ripped, he's ripped the Leicester one down. I know, poor Brendan. Nay, but can I tell you something? Uh, there is no debate in Scotland about the fact that he was a top coach, Tam. Oh, uh, you know, in case oh. people rewrite history, he was a top coach. It, it's just, you know, it's that whole, you, you can't kiss the badge and then bail mm, out the back door. Then move on. Or as, God, no. or as Gordon Strachan says, you can't declare your love for a beautiful woman and then say, get out the road, I've spotted a fantastic one over there. <laughs> <laughs> and Ruffy's going, Ruffy's going, yeah, what's the matter? <laughs> Yeah, so come on, Ali, laugh at that one. I know you tried <laughs> giving a bit of disdain, but that's that's roughy, that's roughy to a team. And uh, I love the way God was tracking kind of a summed that up. It was brilliant. Um, so listen, there's lots of people on the programme. Uh, Andrew Breslin deserves special mention. Andrew says, Serbia nil, Scotland two. Uh, so he's fairly, fairly uh, positive about that. Um, Listen, send him um, a T-shirt, Peter. You. If that comes in, hey, shut up! I've run out of T-shirts. It's unbelievable. I think I've sent. <laughs> I, I think I've. I think I've, I've sent a million out, and everybody's been on my case for them. Um, but we managed to get them all out at the weekend, so that was fantastic. And thank you to the people who did indeed thank us um, for lots of them. Um, Listen, I have to say to you, uh, thank you very much to all the positive messages on our Facebook. Uh, we are uh, we are indeed monitoring as much as we possibly can uh, all the people who post messages. And there's lots of people who love uh, their football. Uh, some people are just a little bit dodgy. And believe me, we, when we get to them on Facebook, we will ban them um, because it's a football family. It's people who come and want to talk about their team, want to talk about... Um, their managers and their players and the performances and where they are in the league. And what we're certainly not going to delve into is some people constantly uh, talking about certain, uh, you know, individuals and trying to question, um, 
you know, uh, they go down a road of, you know, questioning professionals and their bias or whatever. That If you want to talk about that type of thing, um, by all means, uh, go to a radio station and talk about the lunacy um, of referees if you don't like them or whatever. Um, we'll talk about the football, we'll talk about decisions, some they get right, some they get wrong, um, but we're going to try and be fair and balanced. And for some of the comments on Facebook, we will ban these people and try and keep it to the decent people who watch the programme. Don't forget to like, share and follow us. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. To Tam, to Alison, to Ruffy, and from myself, Peter Martin, thank you for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.